So today we're going to talk about flavor development, some tools I've developed to help you develop your flavors and use them safely in beverages. And I'm also going to give you an update on this counter pressure bottle filling situation. So let's get started. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. So this channel is about two years old at this point and I've kind of got a gauge of what people want to see from me. And it seems most people are headed in the direction of flavor development or beverage development or you know, that type of stuff. And whether you're a hobbyist, a bartender looking to make unique drinks for your bar or somebody who wants to launch, you know, a soda program or a soda brand, uh, kind of that's the stuff that I see most people are interested in. And I'm happy to do that. If you have suggestions where you'd like to see this channel go, just post them in the comments below. I do read the comments. I can't answer them all the time because there are a lot of them, but I do read them. Where we're heading for the next few months is at least flavor development. And that leads me to something I've been working on over the last couple of weeks, which is the flavor zone. And if you're a, a Patreon member, you're gonna have lots of access to this depending on your level. And some of the stuff will still be free. So if you're not a subscriber to Patreon, there is still some useful information on this, particularly safety information, because I still think safety information should always be free. So people should be able to you know, work with stuff safely. And so let me give you a, a quick tour of the flavor zone because it, I've been working on it and I think it's probably the most important aspect of getting you to develop your savor flavors safely. So before I give you a tour of the flavor zone here, I'm going to give you an example so I can explain what the issue is and that will help you. So, I've been watching Sam Macer's channel. He's a perfumer and link below or up in the corner, wherever. And this is basically vanilla and sandalwood. And it's pretty common, I guess, in perfumery. And the combination smells fantastic. And this is just basically sandalwood essential oil. I've diluted it down to uh, 2% in alcohol. And this is just basically vanilla extract, which is usually 2% vanilla. And this is 2% as well. So these are on a parallel intensity, but the smell is fantastic. There's kind of that woody vanilla kind of incense smell that you get with sandalwood sometimes, but it just smells like a very rich kind of vanilla extract and it would actually work great in drinks. Now, this is where the problem comes. Most people don't know how to take this and turn it into a beverage. And what I'm telling you is you can turn it into a beverage. Sandalwood is actually grass, which means generally recognized as safe by the FDA and most European regulations. And obviously we all know vanilla is safe as well. So how do you take your sandalwood essential oil and work with it safely? And I've done some videos on the past. Those who have watched that video could kind of calculate it out, but there needs to be more information in kind of a document form that helps you do that. So that's what Flavor Zone is about. And it's basically going to provide documentation, compound information, and calculators that are going to help you basically develop something that you can use in drinks safely. Because this is a fantastic smell. And again, do check out Sam's channel. Uh, there is some uh, parallel uh, information there. Again, we can't use all of perfumers compounds, but a lot of them overlap. You'll be surprised how many compounds that you can digest that are available for perfume. And the one thing you need to know about perfume is that even though you're spraying it on your skin, you're still absorbing it. There is transdermal absorption. So if you're putting sandalwood on your skin, you are pulling it, it does go into your body. So this is why there's not, most people think there are different regulations. There's not really. The difference with perfume is you're using such a small amount of it on your skin that it uh, stays in that level. And when you start looking at the numbers, the levels for perfume are very similar to the levels of beverages. Though the perfume may be more concentrated because you use it in a smaller volume, it, it comes out to about where your beverage is going to. So anyway, Flavor Zone will explain more of that, but let me give you a quick tour I've just been working on this in the last two weeks, so it's not fully complete, but this is kind of a, a sneak preview. 
So let me show you. So obviously I'm not a graphic designer and I keep things fairly basic for you. Uh, obviously this is an introduction, but the most important part is going to be, for example, compound list. This is going to list all the compounds that you can use in flavor development. There are about 3,000 of them, and that doesn't include additives like acids and sugars and high intensity sweeteners. Those are a different category. So there's about 4,000 compounds in total that you can use in food and beverages. Flavors are about 3,000 of those. And of the 3,000, there's probably only about 800 that are really common. So eventually I will get there. I think I've got like 36 flavors up or 37. But if we're going to take a look at one, let's take a look at methyl cinnamate. I've used this before in a previous video. This is basically what it looks like when you get into here. You're going to have basically synonym. You're going to have the name of the compound at the top. You're going to have synonyms. The IUPAC name for people who don't know chemistry is the basically official chemical name that everyone should use, but because of branding and history, nobody really does. But if you're looking for the exact name because you're trying to buy something, that's a good one to use. Uh, I've got some tags down here. If you click these, it'll take you to similar compounds that have like strawberry or cinnamon aroma. Uh, there will always be a quick blurb on what this is, and that will be free to everyone. Now, beyond that, everything on here will be Patreon access. So if you're a paying Patreon member, you'll have access to this. And it's basically, at first, I just give a kind of an introduction into beverage use and how it's used in beverages. You can be as creative as you want in beverages. But the more important part is these reference numbers on the right-hand side. The most important one being uh, the CAS number. So if you go to buy a chemical compound and you wanna make sure that it's the exact one that is FEMA or GRASS approved, you're gonna use the CAS number. That is a unique identifier for every single compound in the world. Uh, if you're looking to buy something or search for safety information, use the CAS number along with the name and that will give you exactly what you're looking for. Now the FEMA number, some that's just helpful to know that it is GRASS and approved and it will also link to the FEMA GRASS website so that you can actually look up the actual regulations. They got some additional information, but uh, for the most part it's just going to give you some basic information that I already provide on the flavor zone. PubChem is basically a big database of chemicals. It gives you even more information than any of the other sources here. And that's just kind of handy if you are looking for something in particular. Again, uh, more in tune with chemists like me, but not necessarily for the general public. But it's here because it's convenient. And then there's some additional other numbers uh, that are European. You can search those, there's different things. But for the most part, they're not gonna be as useful, but they're there because you try to keep everything together. Now you get into physical properties. Uh, solubility is going to become important when you're developing or when I'm developing tools for you to use because that's going to say whether you need to use emulsification or not. And the reality is, is that emulsification is kind of a pain but it is really important for flavor development. But if something's partially soluble in water and you're using it at a lower level, so less, in this case, less than 387 milligrams per liter, then you don't have to really worry about emulsification as much. It doesn't mean that these compounds won't float. They will, so they will separate because they're just naturally lighter than water. So, uh, but that's a whole different topic. Uh, melting point, so when you buy stuff, this one has a melting point of 34 degrees Celsius, which is, you know, above room temperature. You know, it's a really hot day in Texas. If you're in Texas on a hot day, this may be liquid when you buy it, but for the rest of us, it's going to be a solid. That's just going to help you identify that you're using the right compound. So if you buy methyl cinnamate and you get it and it's liquid on a cold day, uh, you might want to contact the supplier. 
Now the boiling point, not so important, but if you're doing any distillation, you're gonna realize that this isn't gonna go over in distillation. And then obviously density is important to know whether it floats or sinks in water. This one's actually will sink in water. It would sit on the bottom. Uh, formula and molecular weight are just, again, other ways of checking to make sure that you're using the right compound. Uh, purity, uh, that's the, the standard. Each one, uh, you'll have different levels of purity. So 98% is pretty standard. But this average max here is kind of the, one of the more important things. So uh, FEMA kind of lists what historically has been the maximum usage or the average usage of these compounds. So 1.2 milligrams per liter, very small amount. So if you go to the TTB and you're submitting a liqueur or a flavored product or uh, let's say a flavoring like almond extract, they have what's fit for consumption and five times the max level is what they consider not fit, so not drinkable. That's there just for guidance and in the future with future calculation tools, that number is going to be important because it's going to signal to you whether you're in a red zone or a green zone. Beyond that, we have the beverage use on the left-hand side. That's just kind of some information. Then you have tasting notes for aroma and taste profile. And those are just gonna help you understand what compounds taste like because most people don't normally have methyl cinnamate. We know cinnamon essential oil and methyl cinnamate's part of that. But this will just kind of help you give a, the understanding of what that is. Now, as you go down, you'll have taste and aroma. They are different. So taste is what you get on your tongue. Aroma is what you get in your nose and they can be slightly different. So for example, taste can have a spicy element or an astringent element or a bitter element. Whereas aroma would be strawberry, cinnamon, you know, they don't necessarily have the same flavor profile. Occurrence, you know, some people want to know they're using a natural product or an artificial product. This one's natural. Uh, below that, over, over to the right, you'll have flavor pairings, what well, things you can work with. This is, these are just ideas for you to develop products. And down below where it says white or transparent solid, eventually that's going to be Darcy's notes. And it's just going to give you you know, what I think of it, because everybody smells slightly different and, but uh, it will be one of those things where I'll just give you a little more information on it. And then below that, there'll be a formula links, which I'll show you in a second, and then references. So external website references where you can get more information. So if I go up here and I go to four, well, let me show you, there's a compound table and you can use this compound table just to quickly search things. So it will kind of bring up everything fairly quickly, but eventually there'll be probably a thousand compounds in this database. It's gonna take a while to fulfill. I'm going to put in my you know, inventory at this point in time, and then we will get to work with formulas, which is right here. Right now I've only got one demonstration formula, which is coconut flavor. So when you go to the coconut flavor, you'll see all these compounds on the right-hand side. Uh, this is parts. So it'd be equal to a hundred parts, but eventually I'm gonna put in units. So whether you're using mils or drops or milligrams, uh, that will be in there. But if you clicked on any of these compounds, it would actually take you to the compound page. And then you could access all that information. But then down here where I was mentioning formula links, you'll see all the formulas you, it's used in. So you can just click on that and it'll take you to whatever formulas it's used in. And then you'll have aroma profile, taste profile, what each component contributes to the overall flavor. And then just kind of a summary at the bottom. That's just gonna help you formulate things better with taste. So again, you can create coconut flavor if you really wanted to, but what I'm really into is creating a coconut flavor that's different. So, you know, bourbon has coconut flavors in it. And how do you amplify that? Would you add sandalwood to it? Would you add, you know, something else? This is what I want to do. And the, the vanilla and sandalwood is just a perfect example. It's just so much richer than vanilla and it doesn't smell like perfume. It just smells like really rich vanilla. 
and it does have this kind of incense flavor and it would work really well whether you're incorporating it into a drink or not. So uh, this is the goal of this website is to help you develop things like that. Even if they're just simple binary mixtures, uh, you'll at least be able to give some ideas. And then there'll be tools. So right now there is um, the PPM calculator, which was on Art of Drink. I would have put this all on Art of Drink, but Art of Drink's a pretty old website. And I'd have to do a bunch of upgrades, so I just decided fresh with Flavor Zone, just for reliability reasons. Uh, there is a formula calculator that's going to be a little more complex than the PPM calculator. PPM is just a safety guide for anybody that's watched the previous videos. You can get access to that when you're a Patreon member. Uh, this flavor and fitness worksheet is from the TTB, and it's more for developing like vanilla extracts or, you know, different flavor compounds that you can sell, but people won't drink them as a liqueur. This one's just kind of the opposite end. So if you're trying to make a flavor compound and sell it, so for example, bitters is a perfect example, uh, that's that formula worksheet. But the general information there is just kind of handy. And then eventually we will get into the docs and info. This is where all the safety information, how to mix things, there's going to be a standardized mixing guide so that you can make like 10 mils or 100 mils of a flavor compound. So you're not wasting a ton of alcohol doing all of this or making emulsions and you know how to make small sample sizes so that you could test things before you put a lot of money into it because it can get quite expensive uh, doing all this. But if you have gear acquisition syndrome, this stuff is awesome. I have it and uh, I just love working with this stuff. It's a lot of fun to tell you the truth. And if you like painting, this is just painting with your nose and your tongue. But the docs in the info section will be suppliers. There'll be a bibliography, which is coming shortly with all sorts of books that you can refer to, uh, everything I refer to. So whether it's text, university textbooks or old documents from the 1800s, that's going to be in the uh, docs. Uh, info section and then there's obviously regulations and safety information safety information will always be free so that's basically flavor zone uh, a simple site where you can get lots of information because that's what's going to make you help you develop better flavors so a quick update on this counter pressure bottle bottle filler this is this has kind of been a pain uh, the first time I did the counter pressure video, the tank just ran out right in the middle of the, uh, the video, so I couldn't finish it. So then I went and got the tank filled, reset everything up, and had to recarbonate and stuff, and it took a couple weeks to get that done. And then I went to check on it, and the pressure was looking good, and then I came back the next morning, and the tank was empty. And I couldn't figure it out, and I thought I just left a valve open or something wasn't sealed tight, so I had to you know, go get the tank filled again come back and do it. But then when I came back and opened the tank, you hear this. That is not coming from anywhere here. This is actually coming from the valve stem. So something in here is broken. So I need to go get a new tank or get this one repaired. So it's going to be another few weeks before that happens. So uh, that's the situation. I've got all the stuff set up and ready to go with it. But uh, without the carbon dioxide working, it's just not going to be happening shortly. But I will get to it, I promise. So basically, that's the quick update. You know, Art of Drinks two years old. So thanks for everybody who's subscribed and watched. Uh, I hope to keep going for many more years. I really do like this. Uh, it does take a lot of time to do this right. But I will uh, make sure that you have the proper information to do it because that's what's going to keep everybody happy and healthy. So I will see you in the next one. And thanks for watching.